My child, after I had been at Jerusalem, engaged in the things which are my father's, so long as my father himself willed it, I went to Nazareth, and there unknown I advanced in grace with God and with men. Understand this, my, this, my hidden life. Study the sentiments of my heart, and strive to imitate them sedulously. You might have seen me with a serene counten countenance and a joyous heart, now at home intent on my various duties and occupations, now abroad applying myself to divers labours, always ready for everything, everywhere obedient at all times and in every place, a spectacle full of grace, to God, my Father, to my Virgin Mother, to Joseph, and to the wandering angels. Behold how the Son of God was employed for so long a time. Behold how he grew up like the lily of the valleys, hidden indeed from the world, but prominent and pleasing in the sight of heaven. Do not wonder, my child, that I passed so many years in retirement that I did not show myself to the world, except after a long time. This example of mine, this interior love of solitude, was exceedingly necessary to men. Without this love of solitude, men influenced by corrupt nature pour themselves out, as it were, into external things. Most of them follow self-love by imaginary and unusual ways and means of salvation and perfection, whereby they are deceived and led astray from the spirit of their state and vocation. Others obey a secret pride, undertake affairs and fill employments without due preparation, without regularity, seeking not the things which are mine, but those which are theirs alone. Then it happens that they wander from the right path, and, as on account of their ceaseless battle and their applications to external things, they heed not the divine inspirations, they fall from one error into another, they become more and more wrapped up in their delusions until at last they render fruitless to themselves every means of salvation and perfection. The object of the example of my hidden and inward life is twofold, to teach men to guard against such evils that they may keep the safe road of salvation and to show them where true perfection consists. Whatever glitters or resounds, whatever awakens in some manner the attention or admiration of men, Upon this most men are wont to look, as something more perfect and better, adapted to glorify God, and to shine before their neighbour. How great an error, how great a delusion, for it all arises from secret pride and ends in self-love. In truth, perfection, as it is made evident by the example of my heart, consists in doing the divine good pleasure with humility and charity, without a regard for solitude, Man is not wont to understand at all times the divine will, to guard humility or to preserve true, not fictitious charity. Pray therefore, my child, that you may be worthy to acquire and cherish a love of solitude. It is so great a good that there exists hardly anything so useful, both to act with a right spirit and to pray with the same spirit. Examine the lives of the saints, and you shall not find one among them who did not love sacred solitude. The solitude which the faithful must cherish is relative to their state and condition of life, whence it may happen that what is praised in one ought to be blamed in another. Now this is a safe rule, the true method of every faithful soul, of all states or conditions, to love solitude in such a manner that after having duly performed whatever your duties or employments demand, you retire with me from the crowd and collect yourself near me until the divine will calls you away. If you withdraw yourself from unnecessary company, useless conversation, the idle rumours of the world, in short, from all matters which do not concern you, you shall have sufficient time to deal with me in solitude. But when from the intercourse of men you retire into solitude, do not simply leave men and yet carry your cares with you, for there are those who are no less distracted and dissipated in solitude than they were in the company of men and amid their occupations because they give free scope to the vagrancies of the imagination, to the inquisitiveness of the understanding and the fretfulness of the will. It is necessary first of all to arrange your free time in an orderly manner, so that to a settled time be assigned a fixed employment, lest overcome by disgust you wander about or waste time 
in discussing how you should spend it. Order in all things is of the greatest advantage. It drives away idleness and dullness of spirit. It prevents many temptations and difficulties. It affords an opportunity of doing well and with ease many things. Lastly, it makes you live for me. He that is alone with me in the sight of angels either makes amends for the past or strengthens himself in what is good. And whilst reflecting on himself and his actions, he is taught many things. For it is not so much length of time or multiplicity of matters as the purity of prayer and meditation, which renders a man truly experienced. He that is collected within himself, away from the turmoil of the world, recovers his peace. If lost or strengthens it, when preserved, he rejoices in the communication of grace, is of divers kind. He rightly arranges beforehand that which he may afterward be able to perform with fruit and merit. When my child does it come, except from union with me that interior men, even under the most trying circumstances, continue so self-possessed that they are an object of admiration to the multitude and are so persevering that they execute with the greatest fearlessness whatever they have once resolved. How many defects shall you avoid? How many virtues shall you practice if you cherish solitude? All the disciples of my heart have always held a certain that they were so much the nearer to my heart, the farther they were with the heart removed from creatures. My child, if you are truly humble, you will seek after solitude, for as much as it is able, humility loves to be concealed and dreads to be noticed. If you are enkindled with a true and divine love, you will seek after solitude, for the flame of love exposed to every breath of the world is easily extinguished unless it be frequently fed in solitude. Or what is worse, charity, if always dissipated, becomes by degrees a disguised sensuality. Solitude, when adapted to each one's circumstances and properly kept, becomes sweeter little by little and secures numberless advantages. For it is the safeguard of innocence, the dwelling of peace, the abode of the interior life, the school of holiness, the place of heavenly secrets, the chosen means of divine communication. If you are desirous of enjoying these things, love sacred solitude. Frequent, frequently will I invite you, frequently will I lead you into the same, that there I may speak to your heart. Be not deterred from cherishing sacred solitude even should men occasionally censor you on account of your love of retirement. Let talkers have their say for yourself, attend to what is good. If you desire to suit your life to the opinions of others, you will have to assume as many different shapes as you meet men, for there are as many opinions as there are minds. When the divine will does not make known to you that you should be with men, stay alone with me. Thus the saints, unless called forth by the divine will, will have continued in solitude, even to their dying hour, unknown to men. Nevertheless, my child, as often as by my will, in whatever manner it may be known, you are sent forth by me. You should leave your solitude with the same readiness and freedom of mind with which you did enter it. At my bidding, you leave as speedily as possible, or rather exchange for the better, whatever useful occupation detains you, gladly accommodating yourself without any sign of displeasure to circumstances which present themselves. Do not bind yourself to any preconceived method, rather than to my divine will. Do not through a false exactness and an ill-regulated strictness render piety hateful or unlovingly. If you have learnt of my heart a truly interior spirit, you will safely follow a middle course, avoiding both extremes. Therefore imitate not those dissipated persons who think in that the time spent in solitude is lost, or perceiving that things interior are distasteful to them, do ever seek pretenses of pouring themselves out would objects entangle themselves with what does not concern them, frequently neglect what they ought to perform and do what they should not they should admit. Neither follow the footsteps of those who, under cover of piety, neglect all things external and with all access shut off. 
so hide themselves in solitude that neither the inviting of my spirit nor charity nor obedience is able to draw them from it and who if at any time necessity drives them out or disturbs them are indignant sullen and fretful for yourself my child follow the divine will lo love to be with me in solitude according to my good pleasure and whenever it is my will that you should be with creatures love to be with with them for love of me.